It was 1976. Gerald Ford was president and Jimmy Carter was elected. The Steelers won the Super Bowl. Agatha Christie died. And Ebola was recognized as a devastating, agonizing death. In a world far away from Paul Simon and Casey and the Sunshine Band, a deadly virus was spreading in Sudan and Zaire. It's estimated that this initial outbreak started September 1st, 1976, reaching over 600 individuals. The World Health Organization took almost two months to mobilize a team. But why? Shouldn't somebody be alarmed when hundreds of individuals are falling ill? Shouldn't somebody do something if perfectly healthy individuals die within two weeks of contracting this illness? To understand WHO's seemingly slow response, one should be reminded that this outbreak occurred in Africa, a continent plagued by malaria, yellow fever, and other diseases that have been eradicated in the developed world. Death and infection rates are increased by the lack of infrastructure for the healthcare system and training for healthcare professionals. The first cases of Ebola hemorrhagic fever were found in workers at the Nzara Cotton Factory and were misdiagnosed as yellow fever and malaria. Chloroquine, a drug used to treat malaria, was administered through injection to a single patient at Yambuku Mission Hospital to treat this mystery ailment, and then to another. Since disposable needles weren't available, healthcare workers were using the same needles without sterilizing them. Only when the patients started bleeding from all orifices did they realize that this was something different than malaria. Without following universal precautions, healthcare workers were exposed to Ebola virus and fell ill alongside the patients they had once been treating. A river called Ebola flowed by Yambuku, and this mysterious hemorrhagic disease was named. Ebola surged from Sudan, starting in June, to the Democratic Republic of the Congo, formerly Zaire, by August. It is believed that two strains, Ebola Sudan and Ebola Zaire, are responsible for the almost simultaneous outbreaks in 1976. The people infected by Ebola Sudan were lucky. Their death rate was only 53%. The death rate for those infected by Ebola Zaire was almost 90%. By November 1976, the outbreaks were contained. Ebola's reign was over as soon as it had begun. Almost a year later, a nine-year-old girl was infected with Ebola Zaire almost 200 miles away from Yambuku and the Ebola River. While this case was isolated, it reassured fears that Ebola was alive and well, waiting to strike. Animal hosts were suggested, but it was something that couldn't be proven yet. In 1979, three years after the initial outbreaks, Ebola came back to the Nzara cotton factory. It was recognized quickly and only 34 people were infected. The death rate was just over 50%. This information, coupled with the onset of symptoms, led people to believe Ebola Sudan was responsible. For 15 years, Ebola stayed hidden. In 1994, Ebola came back, but this time in Western Africa. A new subtype, Ebola Ivory Coast, was identified when a Swiss ethnologist came down with Ebola soon after performing an autopsy on a chimpanzee, later found to be infected with Ebola. This is the only known case of Ebola Ivory Coast found in a human. At this time, there was a surge of what is believed to be Ebola Zaire. Infections started to soar, reaching over 300 cases and killing 80% of those infected. Through the late 1990s, Three outbreaks occurred in Gabon, starting in a gold mine and spreading to surrounding villages as the 32 miners sought help. Due to its rural location, very poor clinical records were kept, and all infections were not reported. From there, the virus was spread amongst a traditional healer and his assistants, and eventually reached a man who traveled to South Africa. These cases were reported between 1994 and 1997, and had a death rate between 60 and 70%. 
Between 2000 and 2003, outbreaks of Ebola Sudan and Ebola Zaire occurred, wiping out humans, chimpanzees, gorillas, and dukers. The location of these outbreaks is linked through its ecology, climate, flora, and fauna. En principe, na mosala ya bagori obiso to inisieke. En tout cas, vraiment, tu as dit que 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 na ba région au biso na bango to sala kati ba région ana en tout cas vraiment to aki ko dwa misusu ba indice na bango te to bandi déjà ko kenda ko dwa mi balé ba si ba kufa ki to moni mo kombo so moko to moni pe na na gori moko na même région au biso to mona ki mo kombo so na gori moko a kufa na a partir de là en tout cas vraiment na son sortir na lobino donc épidémie déjà et c'est quoi D'abord, ma tata n'a pas de boutique. Depuis que je suis venu à la maison, je suis venu à la maison. 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 C'est-à-dire, je suis venu à la maison. Je suis venu à la maison. Je suis venu à la maison. Par exemple, je suis venu à la maison. 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 Et là, il y a des gens qui ont été en train de présence de Banyamanazamba. Mais par exemple, il y a des gens qui ont été en train de se faire. Il y a des gens qui ont été en train de se faire. Il y a vraiment des gens qui ont été en train de se faire. C'est-à-dire que les gens qui ont été en train de se faire, quand il y a des épidémies, ils ont été en train de se faire. Les gens qui ont été en train de se faire, les maladies qui ont été en train de se faire. Mais ils ont été en train de se faire parce qu'ils ont été en train de se faire. Oto kenda kazamba kumi yangu banda na banyama, banda na banyama loko la uba benga na lopoto gori, kelko para ba ninga misus ba benga ibobo, bon na ba banyama misus ba mukumboso. Ebola is still a mystery to modern medicine. It is believed that it uses animals like the chimpanzees and mice as hosts, but it has not been proven. One of the most promising hypotheses links bats to many of the historical cases in the Zada cotton factory and others who had chance encounters with bats. Ebola is part of the Filoviridae family and as such is related to viruses in the Rhabdoviridae family and the Paramyxoviridae families. All viruses in these families include a single negative strand of non-segmented RNA and on a genetic level, there are many similarities in the order of nucleotides. Rabies, Hendra virus, and measles have all been transmitted through contact with bats, through their saliva, or when the bat bites. The epidemiology remains a mystery, as does almost everything else about Ebola. Diagnosis is one of the first battles that doctors face. Since it sometimes appears to present itself as a different disease such as malaria, isolation of the person does not occur very rapidly. Despite some research, there is no current cure for Ebola. Today's treatments call for merely treating the symptoms, fluid and electrolyte replacement, maintaining oxygen and blood pressure levels, treating patients for complicating infections, and possible blood transfusions of platelets or fresh blood are a few ways that Ebola is treated. If the patient dies, it is recommended that they are wrapped in sealed, leak-proof material and either cremated or buried in a sealed casket within a few hours. Traditional burial techniques often cause the spread of the disease because these precautions are not followed. There is hope for the development of a vaccine and or drug therapy. Researchers are still working on these and the development of these could be several years.